Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Callie's Corner video here on Unfiltered Gamer. I'm Callie, and today I'm sharing some unique board games that you may not have heard about before. So these are some of my favorite, but less well-known board game and card game picks. So before we get into the games, there are a couple things I'd like to mention. One is that most of these games were given to us free of charge, but I was not compensated for including them in this video. Another thing is these games are all very different for different audiences. As a reviewer and play tester, we play a lot of different games. So there may or may not be something for you in this list but I hope there is, so let's get started. First up, we have Mystic Veil, vale, a card game for two to five players. Mystic Veil vale has a card crafting mechanic, which kind of like a deck building mechanic, but instead of adding additional cards to your deck and forming your deck, you're actually staying with the same amount of cards, but adding different elements to the cards in your deck. So there's transparent cards that'll add different abilities and different combinations of abilities to cards in your deck. There's also a push your luck mechanic where you're drawing out, laying out the cards and deciding how far you want to go, pushing your luck before you either buy or bust. And sort of an engine building mechanic to it, building up abilities and different combinations on your card as you as the game progresses and you gather the most points. There's a few things I really like about Mystic Veil. Vale. The card crafting mechanic is really unique. The designer, John DeClaire, has used this mechanic in other games in different ways, but Mystic Veil, vale, I think, is a really accessible way to learn about this mechanic, and it's really, really unique. I haven't seen this type of thing before, which was awesome, and it's really easy to play and teach to newer players. We've played it with players who are brand new to modern board games with great success. They love it. I also love the fantasy theme and artwork in this game. You feel like you're you're going into this fantasy world. In addition, there's so many expansions <laughs> that you can add to this game. So while the base game is really accessible, easy to play and learn, you can also kind of level up your strategy with this game, adding in more expansions, adding a lot of replayability, and just having a great long-term experience with this game which is awesome. We also have the Broken Token uh, organizer for this game, which I have not built yet, which I'm a little feeling a little guilty about, but you don't have to feel guilty. Just click the like button if you haven't already, and I absolve you of all guilt. Next up, we have Pyramids of Penguin, which is a one versus many game for two to five players. What's really unique about this game is sort of similar to Battleship or Captain Sonar. There's actually part of the game is a divider between the one uh, between the two teams of the game, the one versus the many. And this game uses magnets in order to create a sort of hidden movement game where the one player is trying to capture the other players as they move around the board, trying to gather treasure and escape before Ping Queen catches them. A few things I really like about this game, the magnetic aspect of the hidden movement is really unique and it's really fun and satisfying whether you're the player trying to catch everyone or trying to avoid <laughs> getting caught when those magnets ping together it kind of makes that ping noise it's really satisfying and fun and even if you're losing it's it's a good time in addition it's really easy to teach easy to learn and play great for a lot of different ages it's ages eight and up but we've had fun playing with all adults as well <laughs> and having a really great but easy and <laughs> fun time together. Next up, we have Escape from the Aliens in Outer Space. This is actually another hidden movement game, but it also has hidden roles, and it's really a way to level up that hidden movement game in a way that's still easy to learn and accessible. It's a party game. You can play up to eight players, but it is very intense <laughs> because you're playing as either human 
or an alien. The humans are trying to escape via one of the escape pods before time runs out and before they get caught by one of the alien players. The intensity of the game is very high because you don't know who to trust and at certain points you have to give out truthful information about where you are. The hidden, you'll be using your player boards and markers to mark where you are, mark your movement, and mark where you think other people are based on the clues that they are given, some of which they could be lying, could be telling the truth. All of this together makes it very intense as you just don't know if you're gonna get caught within the next turn or two. Escape from the Aliens in Outer Space is great for developing logic and deduction, and if you can keep your cool and not let the paranoia and sort of intensity and social part of this game overwhelm you, you can do very well. Next up we have Cristallo, a solo card game which you can also play competitively. Cristallo is a puzzle type card game where you are laying down the cards in a certain way with certain restrictions and rules as to how you can lay them in order to unlock crystal, crystal animals, and to unlock item cards. So the first part of the game you're just laying out the cards and the second part of the game you're going to use the items that you've unlocked plus whatever remaining cards you have in order to try to defeat the black dragon. What I love about Cristallo is the sort of deceptively simple aspect to the game. The gameplay itself is really simple, but there are a lot of different strategies you can play and discovering those strategies, trying them out and learning as you go along is really what makes a great puzzle game in my opinion and this one really hits the mark there. In addition, the artwork is beautiful. I love the art design and the gems sort of add a little bit of tangible element to what otherwise would be a card game and add that sort of, you feel like you're progressing when you're adding the gems to the table and gathering the treasure. Another unique element is sort of the boss battle at the end, which in a solo game, it's great to have kind of as a, a marker of how well you've done in addition to a scoring mechanism where you want to score more points each time you play as you get better, try to beat each other's high scores as well. Cristallo, I was lucky enough to get an early copy of this game. It's going out to backers very soon uh, and hopefully you can find it soon. Finally up here we have Master of Wills, a two-player game of influence and, and tug of war and strategy. So in Master of Wills, it's two players, but you can play as four players on two different teams. You're playing as a faction, trying to gather influence, gather followers and people to your side. So on the board, uh, the characters will come out into the middle. You'll choose a card. Different cards will move different ways or different actions will happen depending on which card you choose to move. And you're trying to accumulate the most influence and the most influential followers onto your side of the board. A few things I really like about Master of Wills, that tug of war kind of mechanic, I haven't really seen used in any other games or a lot of games. I thought it was really well done. I'm really well tied to the theme of of fighting against different factions, using political uh, acumen to try to gather followers to your side. I thought those two things, the theme and the mechanic, are really well connected. In addition, the base game is really accessible, easy to play, and we've played it with a lot of newer players to modern board games as well. In addition, where you can play kind of two versus two, that's another great way to introduce someone new to the game. Then as you're more comfortable with the game, you can construct your own decks from the cards in there or play different factions that have different abilities. And there's tons of expansions that add more factions, add more cards to the game, add more replayability, and you kind of get to explore this sort of steampunk uh, uh, futuristic world as well which is a lot of fun. 
Well, that's it. Thank you guys for watching and listening to my unique board game picks. I hope you found something new and interesting to you, something you want to check out or explore that maybe you haven't heard about before. Uh, is there a game that to you is not as well known but should be? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to hit that like button, hit subscribe. I'm doing Callie's Corner videos trying to do them about once a week here. Uh, those likes and subscribes definitely give me a lot of motivation to continue. It's, it's really invigorating to help share these videos, help share board games with a wider audience, get more different board games out there, some interesting mechanics and different types of games than maybe the ones that you're used to seeing. So thank you so much. This is Callie from Unfiltered Gamer and I look forward to See you guys next time.